So in asana practice, uh, working with the energies of the pelvis, um, muladhara chakra, we're looking for grounding, for strengthening, for activation, for awareness, for stability. Uh, the standing poses are particularly helpful for all of that, <clears throat> but also making sure that all the muscles of the, of, uh, around the pelvis are firing, are active, and um, that we're aware, bringing attention and awareness to that area of the body. Uh, one of the classic asanas, or uh, actually it's not an asana, it's usually considered to be a, a mudra, is a shwini mudra. And for that one, face down, and then bring the legs together. You can bring your feet together, Ashley. Uh, and contract the buttocks and roll them in. Um, and it exhales, usually how this works. And then you can release on an inhale and just do that a couple of times, repeating. So you can see uh, on Zach that also the, <clears throat> the legs or the thighs are engaged and that the entire lower body energetically feels uh, kind of pull together and then softens and releases and pulls together and softens and releases on the inhalation. Now you may also be able to engage the sphincters which are in the pelvic floor. There's the anal sphincter and the urogenital sphincter uh, and to be able to uh, uh, contract the sphincters along with the larger muscles on the back of the pelvis is another way of practicing here. So on the exhale, uh, the sphincter muscles as well as the buttock muscles are rolling or contracting, drawing the sphincters in and up. You may think about the entire pelvic floor contracting between the pubic bone and the tailbone. Contract and draw up on the exhale and then soften and relax on the inhale. And it's important to make sure that you completely relax because a lot of us also hold tension in this area which is not constructive. So being able to relax and making a distinction between the contraction and the relaxing is how we build strength and activation in this area of the body. So once uh, there's some awareness and activation here, uh, we can come <clears throat> into some of the more classic asanas. So uh, Zach, if you'd like to bring your hands under your shoulders and uh, press back to downward facing dog pose, everybody's favorite posture. Um, to do this po pose successfully, you need um, at least enough flexibility through the shoulders and the back of the legs uh, to uh, feel comfortable uh, that you're not crashing down into the shoulders uh, and to be able to tilt the sit bones up. So there's a sense of the spine releasing out of the pelvis. The sit bones are lifting. It's fine to have the knees soft or the heels lifted so the back of the legs don't interfere with your work in the pelvis. And then you lift uh, the sit bones. You can see them kind of lifting the sit bones. And you may be able energetically actually even separate them a little, which creates some space in the pelvic floor. So uh, this is an opening and an activating of the pelvic floor area. And when that's done successfully, you'll also feel the lower belly right above the pubic bone kind of moving in and lifting and the whole spine releasing out of the pelvis. And when that happens, the pelvis can lift a little more, and suddenly the pelvis feels very light, very balanced. Uh, weight is equally distributed between the hands and the feet, uh, and there's a lift here. So the energy that tends to get kind of stuck or is inactive or stagnant in the pelvis is um, released, opened, uh, engaged, uh, enlivened, uh, and the whole body feels refreshed. From here, it's relatively easy to come uh, into a standing forward bend. So just stepping your feet forward. <clears throat> and the standing forward bend is a component in many other asanas or a transition uh, point. And say the sun salutation is a transition posture there as well as downward facing dog. Uh, and the dynamics are very similar here. So again, uh, the legs ground through the legs uh, and the sit bones lift. And when that happens, that same um, action in the pelvic floor and the lower belly that you uh, were working with in Downward Dog comes into play here. Um, here the legs are even more crucial, so we'll spend a little more time thinking about the feet and the legs. I'm going to press down through the big ball of the big toe, and then uh, the outer edge of the heel. I'm going to really press the feet into the floor and lift the sit bones at the same time. 
So you kind of feel the sit bones lifting and rotating, and again, the pelvic floor will um, open and spread. The legs feel very strong, and there's an energetic connection from the pelvis and the pelvic floor down through the legs and back up again. And that also allows um, a release of the spine, uh, just like in downward dog from the lower belly, um, a softening and connection through the rest of the spine. Uh, and then to take this into uh, Utkatasana, uh, it would be another way of kind of working standing postures in the uh, pelvic floor at the same time. So bend the knees, open the arms out to the sides so you kind of keep the shoulders open. Stay in a deep squat and stretch the arms up alongside of the head. Uh, in this pose, the sit bones and the tailbone move down and back. Keep the spine in its neutral alignment, which means uh, the lower back needs adjustment in terms of uh, if you tend to overarch the lower back and you're really flexible or hyperextend in the lower back, you want to draw the lower belly in and support the spine. If you are very uh, flat in the lower back, uh, give it a little lift through the sit bones so that you have a natural normal curve here. And you can see that, uh, that Zach has what would appear to be a very um, neutral alignment through the spine from the tailbone through the crown. Continue dropping the sit bones and the tailbone down and at the same time dropping uh, deeper into the squat but trying not to cantilever forward. So there's uh, a uh, tension between the counterbalancing of the body and the squat that creates a lot of energy and heat in the body uh, and is the, the legs are really the uh, foundation or the springboard for that. So again, we're kind of tapping into the root energy uh, to support the rest of the pose. And then as you're ready, you'll straighten the legs, exhale the arms out to the side and down. Uh, the standing poses in general, as we mentioned, are, are very helpful in terms of uh, a sense of uh, security and stability and being present in the physical world. So one of the uh, issues or one of the uh, qualities associated with the root chakra is a sense of being in the world with confidence and security, sort of a physical security. And the standing poses kind of give us that capacity to feel uh, strong and comfortable and at home in the body. So uh, the, the standing balance poses in particular are very helpful for refining uh, this uh, quality, uh, energetic quality. So with Rikshasana, which is a nice um, resonance, the tree pose uh, resonating with the idea that we have roots, uh, is one that is particularly helpful. Uh, begin by bending the right knee and turning it out to the side and bring the foot to the inner left thigh. There are versions of this where the foot is lower down, but if you can get it to the thigh, you'll want to here because this is what will help you to stabilize uh, in the pelvis. And then press the thigh against the foot as well as the foot against the thigh, and that will help to stabilize the pelvis. You'll feel the outer edges of the pelvis uh, kind of moving in when you do that, and so there's a collecting and a stabilizing energetically of the energy in the pelvis and of the physical structure of the pelvis and the legs at the same time. That's crucial to stabilizing in this pose. It's crucial to stabilizing, period. Uh, then you press the foot into the floor and stand up really tall from there. The sacrum will move towards the front of the body, tailbone down, knee out to the side, and then easily the spine lifts out, up out of that. Uh, and then uh, you can worry about or turn your attention to the alignment in the upper body. If you focus your gaze on a point on the floor, it will help to stabilize since the, uh, the sense of sight is, a, is the very active sense and when the mind is uh, uh, busy or active as well, then it creates, um, uh, it destabilizes the physical body. Okay, so uh, you'll take it on the other side and do note that it uh, seldom, if, you're, if you start to become really unstable, uh, it's time to move to the other side or time to, uh, yeah, stop and try something else. So um, the capacity to stay in this pose is perhaps less than in some of the other standing postures. But once you're there and you're stable through the pelvis and uh, aligned through the lower spine, then you can begin to align in the upper body. 
and that would be stabilizing the thoracic spine by pressing the heels of the hands together, lifting the elbows slightly. You feel the whole upper spine becoming stable, and then finally, if you would like, you can bring the arms up alongside the ears. Not necessary uh, since we're focusing on the pelvis, but uh, the finished pose would give you a sense of um, sort of connecting from the foot, from your root, all the way through the spine, and the arms expressing that kind of upward moving uh, and expansive uh, energy. And then stepping back down, there's a quieting in the mind, um, a sense of inner stillness that goes along uh, with this pose and that goes along with having a very uh, balanced, uh, well-functioning uh, Muladhara Center. So uh, in your practice, uh, using uh, the standing poses uh, and this kind of activation that we were just looking at, in, uh, particularly in your standing poses, but also in all the other postures where you begin to get access to the pelvic floor. A lot of the seated postures have the same um, potential for uh, working with the energies in the pelvis and particularly in the pelvic floor. So w once it's um, awake and alive and in your mind to do that, all of the poses will uh, lend themselves well uh, to creating a, a balanced uh, flow of energy through Muladhara.